Hi Thomas from fieldtennis.net here. Here's my friend Sasha hitting a slow ball and having enough time hitting well in front being very calm. And here Sasha is receiving a fastball and being late on it. So let's see why this happens and what we can do about it. Hey everyone, this is Thomas from fieldtennis.net and today's topic is handling fastballs. And since it's very similar to the previous topic that I taped last time, which was handling deep balls. I wanted to shoot this uh, very soon, so because there are a lot of things very similar and you can apply exercises for playing deep balls or playing fast balls and they will help you in both ways. So what typically happens when you're receiving a fast ball is that again, as I mentioned, you're trying to see the ball and there's no time to see the ball after the bounce. And so if you're waiting to see the ball, you you will just be too late if you initiate your stroke after the bounce. So many times, or most of the times, you will actually have to initiate the stroke before the bounce. So that's one thing that's not so easy to accomplish. And then another thing that happens often is when you're receiving a really fast ball, you panic a little bit. So you're kind of like just stuck a little bit and that prevents you from really smoothly going towards the ball. So that's also one thing that you need to keep in mind. Then another thing that happens is that because you're receiving a fast ball and you're, you're starting late, you want to see the ball, that means you're rushing. So when you're rushing, it means your racket is fast and the ball is fast and you know that speed means risk. Speeding is number one reason for car accidents in the world. So speeding is also number one reason for missing the ball in tennis. And so when you're receiving a fast ball, and you're going against a fast ball with a fast racket, that doesn't look like a good outcome. So what you need to do, you need to have a slow racket when you're receiving a fast ball. So today I want to show you a few exercises on how you can train and improve your, your reception of fast ball and, and control of the fast ball. So the exercise I like to use is the player is on the baseline, so just behind the baseline. So as you can see, my friend Sasha is again demonstrating here with me. So he's standing just behind the baseline. So Sasha, maybe you can prepare. And his goal is to make a very short backswing. So you don't want to make a big backswing. You just Because when you're receiving a fast ball, you want to use the speed of the ball. So the ball has enough speed, enough force, so you don't have to swing at it. You just need to redirect it back. So that's why we need a short swing and also it's easier for the mind, for the brain to calculate the timing when the swing is short and the players will quickly realize that they don't need a big swing if they time the ball well. So the key point for him is that he makes like a short back swing, maybe just his racket at around 45 degrees yes, from the baseline and the goal that I give him is that he needs to try and intercept the ball before it crosses the baseline. That's why he stands just close to the baseline and I told him the ball must not cross the baseline, so you must hit the ball when it's still in the blue area. So here we go, Sasha, we try a few. So at first I will start slow, and the, the last task I give him is that he needs to play the ball back to my hands. So that's how I, I make him a little bit more calm and controlled. And so at first I can just go nice, and in time I can increase the speed, and the player, you see even though I, I throw the ball very fast, he's very calm, so he's calm, he's not panicking because he finds it very easy to calculate, yes. And another idea to keep in mind is that when you're receiving a really fast ball that's bouncing close to you, you're not really letting go of the racket or swinging, but you're more pushing, so there's more of a pushing feel than, for example, when you have a dead ball and you accelerate, that's when you more throw the racket but when the ball is coming fast, you're just kind of pushing against it more with your body weight. So here we go. Yeah, so that is the main idea. You can see I even hit the line and he's, he's quite calm and controlled. So that is like an experience for the player to realize, well, if the ball is coming fast, I don't have to panic. There's nothing special to do. I just need to go against the ball and see the ball well and control it. So don't go with speed against speed. So what happens often when you're receiving a fast ball and you, you can't see it, it's bouncing really fast, is that you're, 
you're jerking your head up and your body goes up and you don't hit the ball. So I'll try and demonstrate. So what happens is you, you go up quickly like, because you can't see the ball. Right? So, so it's very important that when you're receiving a fast ball, you're kind of staying down through the shot and then so your head is down even though you don't see the ball so well and your body is a little bit you kind of staying down and pushing ahead or even in the open stance just kind of staying you don't want to go up like this there is a tendency to do that so try and be aware of it and just stay down and go through the ball more in a pushing motion than in a swinging motion A live ball exercise that you can use is what I call fast against slow. So one player plays fast balls while the other one uh, tries to play back slow balls. So as you can see I'm trying to accelerate the ball a little bit more and give Sasha quite a fast ball and he's trying to control the ball back. After a few minutes switch roles so both players can work on accelerating the ball and also on controlling receiving a really fast ball. We're going to take a look at one of the forehands here so that we go over the main points on what you need to do when you're receiving a really fast ball. So the first one is make a short and simple backswing. So just turn and lower yourself and most of the backswing will be done. The second key point is that you need to initiate the swing before the bounce so that you can go slow with the racket against the ball. You don't want to rush. The third one is that you want to stay down through contact which applies both to your head and to your legs. So don't look up even though you might not see the ball. And the fourth point is that you use more of a pushing or a guiding feel and while still maintaining a gentle grip. So oftentimes when I did that, a player would think about pushing and then they would hold the racket really tight and then the ball wouldn't go anywhere really. So make sure you're holding the racket nice and gentle and it's still applying more of a pushing feel rather than a swinging feel. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think here on YouTube or on my blog fieldtennis.net.